I'm rated 1700, and I'm going to review your game and coach you on how to improve at chess. Let's go. Welcome to episode two of Subscriber Games. This is actually my third time recording this video because I'm trying to make it as short as possible. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Today's game is an absolute slog. This was a 66 move epic battle between a buddy of mine. Uh, his name is Blake. His username is nothing but BS. Uh, I love that username. It's super funny to me. Uh, his initials are actually BS. So it's between him and Hank Scorpio 3, aka Nico is his actual name. Uh, now this was a daily game. There was no time control. Uh, don't worry about these ratings. Um, I played both of these guys in daily games and I would estimate that Blake is around a thousand rapid ELO. Uh, and that Hank, or sorry, that Nico is like probably 1200, 1300 ELO for rapid. So before we start this game, if you have a game that you'd like me to review, uh, send me an email. I'll put the info down below. I need more games to review, so don't be shy. And I want to give you guys the main takeaways of this game before we jump into uh, the specific moves so that we can keep these in mind as we go through. First of all, Blake, I think you played absolutely fantastic this game. Um, I think you've been getting better while I haven't been looking or something because uh, you played really, really well. Uh, if I had to critique a few things, I would say number one, right now you have a little bit of a fancy play syndrome where sometimes you do some tactics and they may or may not actually be the best move. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, at, at your phase of the game now, like you're starting to see these things. So it's good to experiment with them. Number two, make sure you get all the pieces into the attack. Overall, you did a really good job of this. You got all the pieces out very early and efficiently, but there was one rook that kind of just sat on its, uh, basically its home square all game. We'll take a look at that. And number three, be, be a little more cautious with pushing the pawns in front of your king. Towards the end game, this became uh, a little problematic. So we'll take a look at all these. So the game starts off with King's Pawn, and we're basically met with like a King's Indian defense setup. These are all pretty normal developing moves. Blake decides to play Queen D3 here to get out of the pin, and so if Black takes, uh, we don't have to double the pawns, we can still play Queen takes. Uh, in general, this, is, this doesn't quite feel right to me, because I feel like if the Queen's going to live in the center, it should probably live more on the, the second rank. Once you go queen d3, you're maybe a little vulnerable. Like this might not, might this knight might come uh, antagonize you a little bit. So I would have probably played h3 here as white, and then they take and uh, we take. Uh, question: If we play h3 as white, question to the audience: Can you play bishop to h5? Well, you kind of can, but you get trapped. So after uh, pawn to g4. Uh, the bishop is now trapped, and best move here would probably be like knight takes, and you sacrifice uh, one or the other pieces. You could also go this way. But um, yeah, queen d3, also fine. So black decides to take here. Um, I don't think this is necessary. I think it kind of loses a tempo. So in general, uh, you know, I would probably castle here as black and then force white to waste a move antagonizing you, and then you can take. So no need to take right away. But taking is also fine. Now, I think actually, in most cases, castling is usually a good idea. But I think actually this was a little bit of a mistake in this position. So what would you guys play here as white? Would you castle or would you do something else? So Blake castled, which is a totally fine move. I fully support castling um, and just completing your development. But actually, I think the strongest move in this position, and the computer agrees, is uh, pawn to e5. Because now we're attacking black's uh, knight, and we're attacking the b7 pawn. So if like pawn takes, pawn takes, you know, where does this knight go? It's getting a little, a little uncomfortable. And now we can take on b7. The rook is hanging. They probably have to play something like this. Uh, you know, it's, it's not looking so good for black. So I think e5 was the best move in this position, but uh, castling, also fine. So black decided to play pawn to e5. Now, why don't you guys pause? What's the, what do you think is the best move in this position? So I think the best move is actually pawn takes pawn because, and, and computer agrees with this, by the way, uh, because after black recaptures, now they kind of have an isolated pawn here and we've hemmed in black's bishop long term. So normally this Fianchetto Bishop is going to be uh, basically Black's strongest minor piece. Uh, minor pieces are knights and bishops. 
And by having this pawn here now, uh, this, this piece is much less effective. Uh, there's also an extra bonus of this move that we'll, uh, we'll look at in a minute. But uh, Blake decided to instead play bishop to e3. And I actually really like the spirit of this move. So, you know, we're continuing the development. Overall, black, uh, white's pieces are developing really nicely. I also, I imagine Blake's thought process was that if pawn takes, we can recapture. And then maybe we're going to be able to trade off this strong bishop down the line. Uh, the slight drawback is that um, this kind of helps black develop. They can go knight c6. We maybe have to drop back. Um, and then, you know, it's not so clear that we have uh, much advantage here. So yeah, I would have played pawn takes pawn here. These are subtle things, no big deal. Uh, I like the spirit of, of Blake's move here. Play continues. Uh, oh, and one more thing uh, about bishop e3. The other thing that jumped out to me is that this feels a little suspect because um, black actually has a lot of pressure on this diagonal. So like if the knight moves, like what happened in the game, then black's threatening to take here and fork our pieces. And now if we try to capture, they can recapture with the knight and their bishop will uh, remain open for the rest of the game. And this is kind of what happens. So right now, after Black's uh, move here with the knight, they're threatening to take. So Blake played rook a d1. And I really support this. Getting another piece into the attack, great job. Um, I like this development. Now we've gotten basically all the pieces developed. Um, things are looking good. So knight comes out. Now... Or now they are threatening to take here, and there's not really a good way to add another defender. So Blake decides to capture, which makes sense to me. And Black recaptures, and now is forking our queen and our bishop. So Blake plays queen e2, um, and Black can take our bishop. And this is not ideal, because this is actually a pretty strong bishop for us, pointed at Black's king, pointed at the f7 pawn. So... Ideally, we would have avoided this fork somehow. Um, but I looked through the game, and it's it's very hard to figure out a way to avoid this. I looked at, like, you know, is there a way maybe we could have moved the queen or moved the bishop somewhere uh, at some moment to avoid this? And there's not really a good solution. The best solution I've found is that in this moment, uh, playing pawn takes pawn, my, my previous suggestion, actually solves this problem because now there's a pawn sitting on this square and black can't ever bring a knight there to fork us. So that's the extra bonus benefit of that move. Okay. So we take black recaptures. And I think in this position, black should definitely take the bishop. And, you know, they're removing a, a strong piece. But black decided to play knight to b4. And I don't really like this move. I don't think it accomplishes anything. And uh, why don't you guys pause? What would you play here as white? So if it were me, I would have played bishop to b3 because now they can't take our bishop and we're, we're defending the pawns. Everything's solid. This knight's not really doing anything. Uh, we've just improved our position. So um, that's what I would have played in computer agreed. That was the best move. Um, Blake decided to play bishop to c5. So the idea with this is this pawn is pinned because of the rook. So if uh, you can't take because we're going to win, win the queen. But uh, given my notes at the top of this video, what do you guys think I'm going to say about bishop to c5? Do you think it's uh, a justified move? Is it good or is it not? Uh, I think it's okay. I think it's a little bit fancy for, for kind of no reason. So uh, the thing is, like, what's, what's our real threat here? I mean, so we're attacking the knight, yes. But other than that, I mean, like, let's say the knight just moves back. Now your bishop's sitting here. Like, what? what's your threat? I don't really see one. You know, you can't really take here. It doesn't do anything. Uh, and, and this isn't really a good square for the bishop. Like, you, you know, you're going to have to move somewhere else anyways. Um, also, it's a little risky to rely on these types of tactics because... Uh, let me ask you, Blake, did you consider every queen move? Because if the queen moves anywhere off of this file, then potentially black can take here. So like, did you consider every single option for black? Uh, because sometimes black can move the queen somewhere and create a counter threat. And then all of a sudden, because you missed a little detail, now you're losing the bishop. So, you know, it's a little fragile. It's a little brittle. Um, 
yeah, so I think a little overly fancy, but you know, it's a cool tactic, and you're, I think you're at the phase now where we're starting to see these, so it's fine to experiment. Um, and Black Black took the bishop now, which I support. I think that was a good move. And Blake recaptures. Now Nico decides to capture on c3. Uh, I really don't like this because this bishop is basically your strongest minor piece. And the, my knight isn't really doing doing anything. I don't see any reason to trade these off. And once you take this off, the because of this pawn structure, the fianchetto structure, um, the light squares around the king are actually very weak now. Uh, that's sort of a more advanced concept that took me a while to get a feel for. But like for example, like let's say the bishop like comes over here, and then now we all all of a sudden we have some mating threats. So. We'll see how this plays out later in the game, but like if this if this pawn were here, then it controls some dark squares. But because of the formation and us still having a, a, a dark square bishop and a queen, this is a little problematic. So we'll take a look as the game continues. Black plays queen to g5. This is a bit of a blunder. Um, why don't you guys pause? What would you play here as white? So Blake played the best move, which is bishop takes b4 getting the bishop out of danger it was in danger from two different threats and picking up the free knight play continues uh black plays b6 i think this is also a bit of a blunder because uh, we can take the c7 pawn which blake does black plays queen to b5 now what would you guys play here as white it's a little it's a little tricky black is kind of x-raying well they're attacking your bishop and they're sort of x-raying this pawn on b2 what would you play here So I would have played bishop to c3, and the computer agrees, um, because we are, we're reclaiming the long diagonal, uh, and there might be some tactics where we can maybe get some sort of mating threats down the road. We're defending the b2 pawn. Everything is solid, and we're preparing to take this pawn on the next turn. So overall, uh, this feels really nice to me. Computer says that uh, queen takes here is also good. Uh, Blake found bishop takes d6, which is good. Um, we get a tempo on the rook. But after rook c7, we see a little bit of a downside of this move where our queen is kind of almost trapped. So uh, there are two options now. So we could go queen b7, we could go queen e7. Why don't you guys pause? Which one do you think is better and why? So I would have personally played queen e7. And my reasoning is that then I can maybe go like queen f6 and I get some maybe sort of mating threats. Um, and this is, again, because the dark squares around the king are very weak. The computer actually preferred queen to b7, which is what Blake played in the game. And I think the reason for this is that black's position is very awkward here, actually. So question for you guys, can the rook take on c2? It cannot because then it drops the other rook. Additionally, black can't really come target the queen because our bishop controls the square. So this is a little bit uncomfortable for black to try to untangle. Uh, but the other downside of this move was that it left, so if we back up a step, uh, the other downside of this move with bishop takes is that it left the b2 pawn hanging, which black now captures. Now Blake plays queen to d5. I like this move a lot. We're, we're getting the queen back uh, to the center, and it's ready to be more flexible and enter the game wherever it needs to. We're also defending this pawn, so I like this move a lot. Now, black could have played queen takes c2 here, uh, just picking up the free pawn. Question to you guys, can they take with the rook? Still, it's the same problem. We have tension on this rook, so uh, black can't take that way, but um, yeah, strongest move here was queen takes pawn. Nico played rook to e8, uh, putting pressure here. That's okay, too. Now, Blake played rook to d2, which was a really nice move, defending our pawn and preparing for the final rook to stack. Okay, Nico plays rook d8, very logical, getting the, the rook onto the open file, x-raying the queen. Now, in this position, what would you guys play here as white? You know, black has some threats. They can maybe come antagonize this bishop a little bit. Um, how are you going to continue to improve your position? 
So if it were me, I would have played Rook FD1 here. Uh, and this does a few things. Number one, it's getting the final piece back into the attack. Uh, if you remember at the top of the video, I mentioned there was one Rook that never entered the game or it took very long. Uh, that's this Rook. So we're gonna see how long this guy sits on this square. Uh, but I think this was the moment. Let's play Rook FD1. Now we're over protecting the Bishop. So like if they try to come get us, we can actually maybe just drop back to B3, offer the Queen trade. Uh, we have sufficient defense here and play from here. You could have also potentially played like e5 or even uh, f4 and then e5 as one of the main ideas from the computer to kind of like strengthen along this diagonal. Blake played pawn to c4, which was actually one of the com top computer moves. Um, this gets a tempo on the queen. One drawback is it kind of hems in your queen so you can't retreat this way anymore. And it also kind of gives black a free tempo to add additional pressure to your bishop. So I personally don't love uh, pawn to c4, but it's okay. Now here, again, I would play rook fd1. Let's get the final piece into the attack. Blake instead decided to play queen to b5. At first, I thought this was like a total blunder. So, you know, it seems like black can just win our bishop now, right? Because they have the queen and the, the rook attacking. But why doesn't that work? So why can't they play this move? Because this other rook is hanging. So we're going to take it with check, and now basically we're up a rook. We have two rooks, they have one. So um, I assume, Blake, I assume you saw this uh, and that you were utilizing this tactic. Um, in which case, good job. But relying on these tactics can be a little sketchy. So for example, did you consider if they go a6? Because if you take, uh, then they're going to take your bishop, right? Uh, maybe then you try to like back up and like stay on this this rook. Well, then they block you and maybe you take and then they're going to win your bishop. Uh, it doesn't have to play out like this. It is actually all okay. But this is just to demonstrate that, you know, there can potentially be some uh, some problems here. So like if they go here, you can uh, you can just take here and defend. Um, or even uh, if they push and you come back and they push, you can go here and defend. So... But anyways, so this is, you know, a little fancy, a little fancy, a little risky. I would have played Rook FD1. All right, moving on. So Black decided to take the E4 pawn. Okay. Now, it's a little hard to untangle here. What would you guys play as white? My instinct in this position was still to go Rook FD1, although there's kind of a problem I'll, sh I'll show you very quickly. Um, the problem is that we have back rank issues. So if they take, we take, they take, I can no longer take the queen because if I do, then I get back rank mated. Um, although p material is still equal in this position, but we've kind of liquidated our advantage and we have two disconnected pawns, which are weaker than uh, these two connected pawns. So the best move, the move that Blake actually found in this position is bishop to e5. Pretty gnarly, pretty complicated move. Uh, my question to you, Blake, is did you calculate all of the combinations here? Uh, or was this just kind of a rough guess? Like, whatever, let's see what happens. Uh, if you calculated all of it, then super excellent job. So the idea here is um, if they take, we're going to take with check. The queen is overworked. And so if, if they take, now we are up a rook. Alternatively, if they take our rook first, then we win their queen. Uh, and then same thing, if they take here, uh, we win this rook for free. So very complicated move, but it does work out. So take that for what it is. Play continues. So Blake takes, Black recaptures, and Blake decides to play f3 in this position. Now, if you think back to my original notes, uh, now we're going to start talking about these king pawns. So uh, I'm not a fan of this move. Uh, number one, I don't think it really accomplishes much. Like, yeah, you're attacking the, the rook, but so what? Um, Black actually wants to bring the rook to the seventh rank, or the second rank in this case. There's a saying that in the end games, rook belong, rooks belong on the seventh rank. Uh, so we're giving them kind of a free tempo to do that, which is what happened in the game. So good move by Nico. Um, Additionally, the main problem with this move is that we're now opening up this diagonal and at some moment there might be an, an uncomfortable check 
that, you know, maybe they get a fork, you know, it just, uh, it leads to lots of problems. If you were worried about some back rank mate ideas, the better way to relieve this would have been to move either the H pawn or the G pawn. Uh, I think H pawn would have been best here. Uh, G pawn, it's a little hard to explain, but I think the queen can be a little bit more active um, uh, the other way. So yeah, I if you were worried about that, you could have potentially gone H3, but I think there's also some other things that are worth doing in this position. So if it were me, I think I probably would have gone like bishop back to C3. Just try to kind of reorganize our position a little bit and uh, untangle and then get this rook into the game somehow. So yeah, F3, not a fan, but that's okay. Uh, it is a little hard to find a move in this position, so it's all good. Uh, rook to E2, good, mo good move by Nico. And again, this is part of why it's so strong. Like Black wants to come down here and come murder you. So... You know, it's looking a little sketchy. And alternatively, if you imagine this pawn was still on its home square, uh, if the rook came down and queen came down, now our rook is defending the lead pawn. It's a little easier to defend than in this scenario where if the queen comes down, you know, how do you defend this pawn? It's a little tougher. You can't go up because they can just take you. So, you know, that's another reason. White plays pawn to a4. There's actually a brilliant tactic here that Nico found in the game. So why don't you guys pause? What is the best move for black? See if you can play like Nico in this position. I'll give you two hints if you need them. Hint number one, this bishop uh, is only defended by the queen. So the queen is the only defender of this bishop. Hint number two, this queen doesn't have that many squares it can stay on to keep protecting this bishop. Actually, the third I have a third hint. Hint number three, can you kick this queen away from de defending this bishop? So the move Nico found in the game is pawn to a6. Now, if we take the pawn, black wins our bishop. And if we try to stay on this uh, rank, and stay defending the bishop, what does black play now? Again, removes the defender just a different way and picks up the bishop. So really nice tactic here by Nico. In terms of how could Blake have foreseen this problem, it's it's hard to see. It's very subtle. Um, there's kind of two hints. One is that you're tied to this bishop. So that's a little bit you know brittle, a little fragile. So the queen can't really move away off of this rank. And another is that your queen doesn't have very many squares along this rank. So that that would be the uh, trigger for you to realize, oh, maybe I need to like defend this bishop some other way um, first or move it away uh, somewhere, anywhere. So yeah, I don't blame Blake for missing this. And I think it was a great job that Nico found it. Um, Blake decided to take the pawn, which is uh, the best move given the circumstances. And play continues, but now Nico has equalized, more or less. Uh, Blake is still up a pawn, but these pawns are undef are disconnected. And we'll see how it plays out from here. Blake decides to play f4. Uh, again, I'm not really a fan. Uh, I don't think this really accomplishes too much. And now we've disconnected our pawn even further. So in this position, these pawns are at least one unit. So like the king defends these two pawns. This pawn defends this one. You know, it's one solid unit. Once you go f4, now this rook is kind of uh, tied down to defending that. If you decide to play g g3 so that these are all linked, uh, once you do that, then your king is even more open. Now this diagonal is open. So, you know, it's a little problematic. Instead, I think I would have tried to get my queen somehow more centralized back in the game. It's a little uncomfortable because you can't really, you know, this pawn is kind of in your way to getting back into the action anywhere. Uh, black has a lot of control on the, these two files. So I think I would have gone queen to b7. Uh, that's one of the top moves here. And basically try to sort of untangle somehow. But Blake decides to go f4. Rook to c5. Now in this position... Blake thrusted his h4 pawn. Uh, I, I imagine here he just didn't know what to play. It is kind of hard to find a move here. Uh, the problem with this is this pawn is undefended, so black can sort of take, but then we're going to take... Um, if they take right away, we can take this pawn, but then they take this pawn, and they're probably winning one of these next. Um, 
so yeah probably not the not the best move and again it's like we're extending the pawns in front of our king which generally we want to keep close to keep us safe so what would we have, what should we have done instead i think i would have played rook to b1 with the idea that we want to pick off this pawn and get our, our queen and our rook uh defending each other get them coordinated again you do have to be a little bit careful because there are some checks now uh, and again, this goes back to this pawn should still be here, in my opinion. So this check, these checks should not, uh, sorry, these checks should not exist. But um, in this position, they do. And you have to be a little careful because, you know, uh, if the queen checks, you just go to the corner and it's everything's OK. But if you accidentally step to F1, uh, now they can maybe pick off your rook, you know, it's and you're losing. So a little dicey letting there be some checks here. But play continues. So Blake decided to play pawn to h4. Okay. Now Blake found a nice maneuver here to get the queen back to the center of the board, back into the game. So uh, he went check and then brought it back here. Uh, I also considered, so what happens next is black takes uh, with tempo on the queen, the queen moves, and then they, they win our other pawn. Uh, so I also asked myself, Maybe it was even better to go like queen f3 so that when they take, there's no t uh, there's no tempo on the queen. But actually, they're still probably winning this pawn because if we try to defend, they can take over here. And, um, you know, now they're probably winning this, win winning one of these soon. So, um, yeah, it's just a little problematic. Blake loses a, Blake loses a couple of pawns here, but that's OK. Play continues. Blake plays queen to b2 check. Now, in general, we don't want to waste checks like this. So I don't think this really accomplishes much. Black just plays pawn up. And now there's no more checks in the position. I think it's better to leave these checks on the board for a more opportune moment. So for example, let's suppose something like this happens. And this doesn't quite work. But let's imagine we get like a game-winning fork and pick off the rook. You know, that's what you want to use the check for. Like currently... Uh, yeah, in this position, black has a problem in their position that their king is standing on a checkable square. And we don't want to let them uh, solve that or get rid of that uh, for no reason. So just keep that in mind, Blake, for next time. You, you generally don't want to check uh, unless it's giving you something uh, concrete. Then Blake decides to play f5. I like the spirit of this. We're trying to soften up black's king. The problem is it drops the h4 pawn. Um, but things are, you know, a little complicated here. I wonder, could you have played uh, g3 here? Maybe, maybe g3 here was nice. Get these connected again, then maybe your king might come up here and try to be safe, um, you know, somewhere near the pawns. So Blake played f5. Black threw in a check, and then threw in a check. And now this is getting a little sketchy for our king. Uh, if somehow like this queen was here and this rook was not, this would be a checkmate. So, you know, things are a little sketchy. So black moves and is offering the queen trade. Why don't you guys pause and tell me, are, are you, would you trade queens here? Why or why not? The first two times I recorded this video, I, I, I thought I said we should take queens, but I've kind of changed my mind because my thinking here was that, um, after something like this, that this isn't, you know, this is definitely winning for black, but it might be hard. But I think even at like the 1000 level ish ELO that this is still probably a pretty easy win for black. Um, so in light of that, I like Blake's move, which was queen to E2. Now you need to be really careful here because it's like you're almost checkmated, but you, you're, you're kind of losing here. You know, our king is very vulnerable and um, we're down two pawns now. So you got to play for the variance. So I like, I like Blake's move actually. So play continues. Okay. Throw in a check and we block. This was actually a very momentous move. Do you guys know why? This was the first time this rook has moved off of this square, basically all game. So we are now on move 40. It took 40 moves for this rook to do anything. Um, that's okay, but for next time, Blake, let's try to get this guy in the action sooner. Uh, 
by the way, guys, in general, there are some positions where after you castle and the rook is on uh, F1, that it is already kind of active in the game. Uh, but this game was not one of those cases. Okay, play continues. Check. And black tries to liquidate and trade off pieces. But now Blake finds an amazing move here. Pause the video, play like Blake. What is the best move for white? Queen to c7, check. Forking the rook, winning the rook. Very nice here by, by Blake. So now we have an option. We can take this rook one of two ways. Which way do you guys think is better and why? So Blake played rook takes, and that's what the computer says is slightly better. Um, I actually think queen takes is much better from a human standpoint because now their queen is pinned. So we're, we're forcing the queen trade here. And I think this is just an easier position to win. We're going to get this pawn. We have a rook and a couple pawns, and they have nothing. I think this is an easier position. If we play rook takes... You know, it's queen and rook versus queen, and our king is totally vulnerable on an open board. So leaving them with a queen is a little bit dicey, as we're going to see as the game continues. And in general, guys, when you're winning, when you're up material, you, you want to trade off as much as you can because then your advantage becomes more apparent. So, for example, right here, like queen and rook versus queen on an open board where we're vulnerable, uh, that's not really an overwhelming win. But if we trade the queens off like in this uh, scenario, this is rook versus basically nothing, right? This is pretty much overwhelming win. Now you still need to calculate and make sure that like you can stop this pawn and that these guys aren't all gonna promote, but I think you can, so. But Blake decides to play rook takes and this is still very winning position, but it might get complicated. Play continues. Check. Check. Blake decides to go rook to f2. Now this is a very problematic move actually because now our rook is pinned. So we've pinned ourselves. In general, you wanna to try to avoid this. So in this position, what would you guys have played as white instead? Uh, where can you move to, you wanna to try to get rid of the checks. Where can you move that there are no more checks? So I would have gone king to h2 and the computer agrees that that was by far the best move so king h2 is plus 32 which is just an insane advantage uh the next best move is plus five so uh king h2 is the best here because where do you check me can you check me as black here there's nowhere here what about this question to you guys can you check me on h4 check what do you play as white Pin it to win it. Black's queen is falling, and we're going to have a queen of our own. And this is a very easy win. So after king h2, there's no more checks. We're just very solid. Everything's all good. And we can, you know, start to pick off pieces and, and do good stuff. So Blake played rook to f2. And let's notice how hard it is to untangle from this. Because let's say now you try to go king h2. Uh, you can't because they're going to take your rook. And let's say you try to get out of this pin. Maybe you try to run to, to f1. Let's say black plays a move. You go king f1. Now what does black play? All of a sudden, queen d1. Boom. You're mated. Game over. You lose. Look how dangerous this is. The queen on an open board with the king exposed. This is why you don't really want to leave your, your opponent with a queen on a board like this. Um, but it's okay. It's okay. You know, but so that's why this move was very problematic. We'll see if Blake can overcome this or not. Play continues. Check. Check. Now in this position, I would again go King H2 because now our, our queen is defending our rook. So we can untangle here and get the pieces coordinated again. Um, Blake found a really nice alternative, which is, uh, this check forking and picking up black's past pawn. So this was also very nice. I like this a lot. Play continues. Check, 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 
just hunting them down. Now, at first, when I recorded this video, I was like, can't they play en passant here? Uh, but you actually can't play en passant because of the pin by the rook, which is kind of cool. Okay. Check. Check. And Blake finally gets out of this pin and tries to hunt down Black's king and successfully sets up basically a, a ladder mate. And in this position, Black resigned because if they go straight back, they get checkmated. And if they go here, they are losing their queen and it's game over. If you guys think Blake did a good job this game, drop a like on the video. I certainly did. Let's do some final closing thoughts just to hammer home those, those main takeaways once again. So first of all, Blake, again, I think you played absolutely fantastic this game. This was probably 200 ELO point higher than I've last seen you play. Um, there were a couple moments where maybe you over relied on some tactics, maybe a little bit of fancy play syndrome, but that's okay. You're starting to see these things. You know, it's okay to experiment. Uh, in the end game, pushing those pawns in front of the king was a little bit problematic. Uh, keep an eye on that. Try to find alternative moves. And make sure to get all the pieces in the game so that one rook sat on f1 for 40 moves. Uh, that's okay, but you, you did mobilize all your other pieces really efficiently, really well. So keep up the good work. Um, feel free to send me another game in the future. And if any of you watching this have a game you'd like me to review and make a video just like this one with customized advice personally for you, send me an email. All right, my chess champions, that's it for today. Thanks a lot.